Hey, what's up, everybody? So today I am going to do a walkthrough to the Garmin 390 LM uh, European version. I bought this one a couple of weeks ago. I have been using it almost every day on my motorcycle, and uh, I would like to show you, you know, my experience and uh, a couple of uh, um, tips and you know the best use of this device. So, um, this one has the latest firmware update, which I downloaded about a week ago. It's the 6.17.07, and the software version is the 3.90. You can download it for free from the Garmin website or using your Garmin Express uh, app. All the communication with the computer is, is done through the mini USB cable which I have here. Uh, you know, firmware update, um, map transfer, and uh, all the communication with the device. So this is the main window. This is uh, the window where, where you can choose your, your destination and view the current map. So I'm going to show you my current map. So this is where I live. I have chosen this motorcycle icon. It's customizable. You can actually choose the device uh, or your vehicle from uh, all, all sorts of um, icons, like a small car, the arrow, uh, footsteps, uh, bird, scooter, you know. I'm going to choose now the, the the arrow and the driving map view so you can choose either 3d true north up it's a this is a little bit confusing for driving and riding and the track up of course the 3d is uh, the ones that's more intuitive and it's easier to follow okay so the I have I have been searching how much uh, storage the Garmin Sumo has. I couldn't. I wasn't able to find it. So, basically, what you're gonna need is a mi uh, micro SD card in order to uh, upload your maps. With the upgrade, I had to use a micro SD card because the internal GPS storage wasn't able to load the maps. So, at the moment, I have. Uh, 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 I think it's an 8 gigabyte micro SD card and it's uh, all the maps and everything took about uh, 3 to 4 gigabytes so that's one of the things that you have to be aware if you're gonna get your Garmin GPS be sure that you get um, a lot of internal storage uh, one of the things that um, one of the things that I discovered this weekend was that I have also my um, Role camera, which uses an F micro SD card to to store video, and uh, I took out this uh, the SD card from here, which is in the lower part. I'm gonna show you. It's down here. I have to push a little bit. It comes out. It's a micro SD card. So, when you take out the card, the device restarts and loads the internal uh, maps. So, I didn't know that um, the, the device uh, becomes dependent on the, on the storage. And uh, without it, it's unable to show you a map or even navigate. So, I'm going to show you now how... Um, how the route is going to look without the SD card. So this is the pop-up window that comes every time you restart your device. Okay, it always has this warning. Okay, so now I go to the map, and then you see it like this without detail. So if you don't use, if you forget or you take out the SD card or it or data becomes corrupted, or somehow someone steals this card, or you don't have a card inside, you're not gonna be able to see anything. 
okay so this is one of the disadvantages of the that I found that uh, you have to keep the SD card in there and make sure the data is working because otherwise you're just gonna have a lot of you know just like bare, very basic train tracks and and some lines not real not really uh, not real maps to navigate so this is something I discovered this weekend so you gotta be careful with that um, make sure that uh, you have all the maps loaded and uh, and that you're able to to have a good quality SD card so you don't get the data corruption so I'm gonna put this card inside again I don't like SD cards at night, it's so small sometimes it's so difficult to get them in okay so now I put the SD card back onto the Garmin Zumo and uh, let's see how the maps look now so as you can see now after the SD card is in there and it has all the map data you can see more detail without the SD card your Garmin Zumo is completely useless so make sure you have the SD card in there all the time okay so let's go to the back to the GPS all right so this GPS is a um, motorcycle specific GPS but you can also use it with your car currently I'm using a suction cup on my iPad because that's the only way I could have it um, uh, have a, a steady stand for my GPS because this is glass so the suction cup attaches very well to the glass so with this suction cup you can use it on, on your car but it comes with the the specific attachments for your motorcycle. I already have a video uh, on that. You can check it down here. All right, so let's click here. Now it's in motorcycle mode, but here you can change into automobile or off-road. You can either use a car mode or motorcycle or off-road. With off-road, it's, it's really cool because it, you can upload some trails that you can find in Wikilog and it won't use the normal road or street algorithm and uh, will find its way using off-road uh, tracks but for the moment I'll leave it here on the motorcycle so we can do a walkthrough on on the uh, GPS operation okay so with the normal navigation it works just like a normal GPS uh, it's a very uh, comprehensive and intuitive uh, design uh, you can actually add all sorts of shortcuts here um, that where you can where you can actually have all this kind of stuff here so I can add for example lodging to my track and then when I'm traveling I want to be able to find quickly you know bed and breakfast and all this stuff with the distance and everything okay so let's click here let's see the the route and it shows all the um, navigation and ad address data okay so click go and it works just like a normal GPS you know so it's uh, finding its way reception here it's a, a little bit weak so it might take some time but basically it works like your normal GPS below you can see the dashboard you can customize this dashboard I'll show you how um, let's see I'm just doing a walk through here, but I don't remember how to go there. Okay, here dashboard options. So here you can actually change, you know, switch the preferred dashboard with the orientation speed, or you can choose the elevation. Um, you know all this stuff. So I'm going to mute, I mean, 
mute it for, for just for the explanation. So it basically works the same as a normal GPS. Uh, one of the features uh, on this uh, GPS is the route preference. So with the route, you can actually choose, you know, between uh, four modes: faster time, curvy roads, off-road, and shorter distance. So far, I have I have used faster time and curvy roads. With the curvy roads, you have to be careful because uh, if you use this uh, mode uh, in the city, it can take you, you know, through a really uh, complicated um, routes. It can, it can drive you through a park or through some strange alleys just to... Um, um, find you know the curviest way around the city so I really recommend you to you know switch this off or, and use faster time when you're in the city unless you want to drive around the city and go through every corner park and you know strange route this thing can take you the off-road mode I haven't tried it so far I'll, I'll do a video on that later and the shorter distance is just as it says the shorter distance Okay, so one of the things that I found with this is that uh, there is no way you can toggle, you know, within your navigation. When you're in the navigation mode, I just turned it off just because we, I had no reception here. I mean, I'm in a room, in a build, in a big building, so I don't have reception. But outside, you shouldn't have any problem. So the problem with the curvy roads, for example, in in the, in the cities, is that it's going to drive you around, you know, really strange. Uh, streets and back roads so the thing is um, one of the things I criticize about this uh, device is that you are not able to toggle from the um, curvy mode to the normal or you know the faster way or or the off-road mode from within the navigation window so I was trying to find a way to toggle uh, the navigation mode and it's not possible so what you have to do is you have to go back to settings and uh, with root preference you have to you know switch it to faster time and then it recalculates um, it recalculates the the route using that faster time but it won't it won't uh, uh, you won't be able to toggle it within, you know, just on the fly from here. And this, I think this is one of the um, disadvantages of of the of the Garmin GPS. Uh, it would be great that you had the option to toggle within those navigation routes here, so you don't have to go back to settings and switch it back. And you know, so that's one of the things. All right. So another feature that's really cool about this one is uh, the trip computer. So here you can, you can actually see all your travel information. You just reset it on your next trip, and you can see all the kilometers traveled, the arrival time, and your speed, you know, and your moving average speed. You can see more information, you know, more travel information here. Also, it has the fuel settings, which you can also see it from here, from the startup dashboard. Uh, it tracks your distance if you know how much distance you can travel per tank at least on my motorcycle is about 300 kilometers so uh, I set up this here so when I have the the full tank I just uh, reset the fuel tank here and uh, the Garmin Sumo will calculate based on the kilometers traveled how, how much fuel I have left and I can be able to see that information here, you know, so on the trip computer. Okay, one of the other features it has is the verb remote. If you have the camera, the uh, verb camera, uh, you can also control the camera from here and you will be able to see, you know, uh, the camera from here.
from this screen and you will be able to start it to what to actually uh, review what you're seeing or, or check what you're seeing on your camera take take pictures and uh, hit on the red button that's very useful because when you have your your camera attached to your helmet you are unable to know if it's uh, actually recording or you're unable to see you know the field of view so with this feature you're able to to do that at the moment I am not, uh, I'm not using this feature because I don't have this camera but um, I am using a different camera but I'm thinking about about getting it in the future okay so now let's go to the cool stuff which is the apps that come with your GPS okay so here are the, the stuff that you're gonna use the most with your GPS and one of the the ones that I'm using the most is trip planner with the trip planner you can actually create new trips so you select your start location for example home then I select that and then you start adding locations that you can choose either from your searches from your saved places your favorite places coordinates or just browsing the map and from here you can just add waypoints and you can create your own trip you can also download trips from a, a ton of places one of my favorite places is Wiglocks. I can find a lot of trail and off-road uh, tracks that are pretty cool. Those ones, I can find them here. And what I actually do is I find them on the website and then I download them to the, to the Sumo with a USB cable. So I'm just going to do an overview of one of the tracks I found. So this is one of the tracks I found. It goes all the way from Barcelona to the mountains and all the trip is through off-road so this is the green line you can see it's going through all the way through the mountains so I cannot use this track to navigate I have to convert it to a trip so what I do is I just go to the wrench click here convert trip I use the start to finish you know the track was actually had a start and a finish and I'm actually using the same order you can also invert it you see finish to start you can edit the name when you click done it calculates the trip okay so it takes some time to calculate all the waypoints and convert it into a an actual route that you can navigate so this is going to take some time and we can i'll show you later how it looks okay so this is a uh, wiki lock the website I've been telling you about, this is an open source uh, track finding uh, community and you can basically find GPS compatible tracks for your smartphone or your smartphone or your GPS device. It also has a, a quick log app for your mobile device. It's pretty cool. You can upload your trails or download trails that are uploaded for free by the members. So here's about the three million trails in Spain where I live there are a ton of uh, trail uh, bike uh, trail uh, trail bike trails <laughs> motorcycling trails ATV hiking uh, running trails all sorts of stuff it's pretty cool amazing um, so here you can basically find all the trails around your your area and you can upload yours so it's very easy I just find a trail there is a search here I can search the trail review the trail here check the review and the description see the ratings and then if I like the trail I just download it here I download the GPX file the Google Earth file or the Garmin file this is one of the reasons I bought the Garmin um, for this you have to use a plugin with your browser that sends the the trail to your GPS through a USB cable and the iPhone or Android trail. This is using just a code that you input into your app and then it finds the trail. It's pretty cool. So yeah, this is one of the most entertaining things about having a GPS on your motorcycle and I highly recommend to check this website it's wikilock.com 
Okay, so it's almost finishing calculating the route and it's going to transfer it into my trip planner. So basically what you do is you download it, the tr you download the track from Wikiloc and I'll do a video later on that, which is this one. All your downloaded tracks will appear here. Um, here you can import them, share them. And then what you do is you convert them to a trip and after that they will appear here. So it's actually this one. So this is the way it looks. So it's a seven uh, hour and 35 minute route. It's an off-road route and it's 450 kilometers. It's a lot. So you can actually see it on the map. So you can review it. It's very similar as the one we imported. Yeah. And then uh, you can zoom, see all the details. And then you just click go. And here you can either use the beginning or the end to use it. And then you can actually see the route here. So I'm going to simulate this driving route because we, I don't have a signal at the moment. So it's simulating as if I were driving. It's showing me all the information here. And the navigation. So I'm going to stop it. This is one of the cool things because you can actually go to Wikiloc, find all time, all types of crazy routes. Probably where where you live, there's a lot of people that uh, sharing uh, their latest trips, and you can actually do that. Also, the cool thing here is that uh, the Garmin Sumo can also save your trip, and you can download the trip from here into your into your computer using the Garmin Express or Basecamp and upload that as a as a track for other people to, to travel. So that's that's pretty cool. So with the track back you can actually see you can actually go back you know backwards into the place for example if I took a trip from here to Paris track but can actually be show me the way back home. That's pretty cool. With the tire pressure, it's, you have to use the tire pressure monitors and the verb remote. I already uh, explained that. Also, the compass and the service history. So here uh, it's in Spanish, but I, actually you can. Um, it, it will show all the stuff. For example, from like the oil change, the spark plug change. When did you change your your brake pads? Uh, oil filter. You can actually have a record here. So with the last spot, you can actually see the the latest spot where you parked your motorcycle and you took off uh, your GPS device from your motorcycle, and it will actually uh, take you back to the place you left your motorcycle or the last place the GPS was attached to the motorcycle. This is pretty cool if, if you are traveling and, and you leave your motorcycle in a far location that you don't remember. As long as you have the GPS, you can remember how to go back. It will tell you how far from the place you are. A calculator, you know, when you're on the road and you need to calculate something and the unit converter. Also word clock. Alarm, when you're on the road, the alarm, and uh, the places where you've been, you know, your travel history. So these are the apps that come with your Garmin Zumo. It would be cool that uh, these devices already had some kind of compatibility with iOS or Android, like CarPlay or or Android Auto, but at the moment uh, they have their own uh, OS that's a little bit, um, you know, difficult to connect with uh, with your phone. The other feature that I have with this one is the Bluetooth, which I can use uh, to to listen to the uh, directions when I'm riding, which is very useful. It avoids you to, to get distracted. You know, looking at the map, 
but uh, it's something I use very often. Uh, the only thing with this one is that I cannot listen to music because it doesn't have the MP3 player function. I have to figure out a way to do that. Okay, so I think uh, this is um, quite a... Um, uh, comprehensive overview of uh, the main features of this uh, device um, uh, for if you have any questions or you have any comments just drop me a line and uh, see you next time